those of you who have known me a long time know that during the planning of EarthScope, I was a PI for the Panga Network in the Pacific Northwest, one of the networks that went on to become the nucleus to the Plate Boundary Observatory. And in those days, I worried about how to pay phone bills on three-year awards for uh, infrastructure investment that was clearly valuable in the very long term, and how to come to the scientific discoveries like the episodic tremor and slip, which of course grew out of the Canadian and US components of an international continuous GPS network, how to sustain uh, how to sustain networks that led to those kinds of transformational and unexpected discoveries uh, on the three-year funding cycle. So I was quite pleased when EarthScope came along and the Plate Boundary Observatory sought to unify the existing networks and to densify them at scales that I would not have imagined without the kind of vision that Paul Silver brought and to also relieve me of some personal headaches uh, when it came to the phone bills. So now I've gone on to UNAVCO, where I face an interesting similar dilemma, knowing that EarthScope is planned as a 15-year project, and yet we've made investments that clearly have value at much longer time scales. And so how do we then look towards the next big thing, recognizing that Plate Boundary Observatory is not a transportable array, it's a set of permanent installations, or what we used to call permanent, for continuous um, observations. And so if the science, uh, what are the science, I would like to challenge this room to think about what are the ongoing science opportunities that can be realized from longer term uh, geodetic observations that we are coming on our second 10 years of a fully deployed, I mean, sorry, second five years in a 10 year a fully deployed observatory period, what is the transformational science that uh, might sustain plate boundary observatory or might grow out of a sustained plate boundary observatory? And how much of plate boundary observatory do we really need in order to go that direction? And then I'm going to make the case that PBO could become like the Panga was to PBO, the network, uh, the nucleus to something that's much bigger than the US scale networks that we have. Uh, that we are currently enjoying the, the science benefits of. So, of course, the science plan for, the, for EarthScope was revised and significantly expanded in 2010, looking at the reality of the serendipity science. I really liked it, being able to follow, follow Bale's, Basil's talk because he conceptually sets up so many things that also happen in geodesy. Uh, but the things that we set out to learn are part of what we learn, but the serendipity that's grown out of these observations is enormous, and in the case I like a pointer. And in the case of, well, you can't do it from here. Um, in the case of EarthScope, uh, we have clearly, uh, if you look at the last, uh, the last topic, the EarthScope and hydrosphere, cryosphere, and atmosphere, some of the implications for EarthScope science that really weren't conceived as part of the uh, initial notion for a solid Earth tectonically focused uh, uh, continental scale observatory. Uh, the geodesy community in parallel has done a science plan which also finds that the technologies that geodesy has uh, that have so rapidly evolved as duncan nicely explained um, as those have been fully um, implemented and widespread implemented that the environmental questions are as germane to these these tool sets as are the solid earth questions that we expect to answer so uh, we focused in this report on where is the water uh, because it is kind of the unsung, uh, until recently, success of geodesy. And we also have some new tools that speak to geomorphology, like the LIDAR scanning that allow us to address a broader spectrum of, of our science problems. So EarthScope, of course, has been an, uh, a wonderful success in the integration of geodesy and seismology, both on the side of technical advancements in developing community data formats for real-time GPS, co-location of accelerometers, and high-rate GPS. Uh, the Cascadia upgrades to real-time, that would be uh, one second or better at, uh, for frequency, and uh, latencies that uh, are approaching and are consistently uh, clustered around a half of a second. Uh, 
uh, Cascadia uh, has planned upgrades to further those capabilities throughout more of the network as we uh, undertake the routine operations and maintenance of the networks. And, um, and then, of course, the changes in landscape with vendors, uh, like, uh, as Duncan explained, there is this wonderful synergy between the scientific community driving the technical requirements for GPS in particular and for geodesy more broadly, while much, much larger user communities like surveyors and civil engineers drive the costs down. So we expect to see the same kind of successes with tripod LiDAR that we've seen in GPS with these orders of magnitude or 30 fact, factor of 30 uh, reduction in the cost of instrumentation. And then, of course, the scientific questions are really why we are in the business. And, um, and those have played out so well for the first 10 years of Earthscope. So in con the, one of the things I would like to ex stress is this interdisciplinary aspect. So while the, uh, the exquisite data products that we expected, like the velocity field on the left, which was published as a map scale uh, publication by the University of Reno last year, has met our expectations and for the kinds of data products that we as a, com as a US science community should be able to produce and use to push forward the science. We've also come to understand the complexity of annual signals, and this is actually from a high latitude station that Jeff Freimuller uh, analyzed on the left, showing uh, the very strong seasonal variation that plague the time series, if you're interested in the solid Earth, but that tell a story in themselves of the loading at high latitudes that happens seasonally of the snowpack, um, with the black being the vertical, the very strong loading that uh, correlates to environmental conditions. And uh, it becomes an important signal for us to understand in maintaining a global reference frame that allows us to press forward to millimeter level global geodesy. And of course, the you know this is one of what I think we could call the holy grail projects for Earthscope to be able to use the seismic imaging and the known topography to under to make predictions about uh, plate uh, motions and then uh, compare those to the GPS uh, velocity field and understand whether. Uh, whether we're really fully accounting for the processes that drive the plate motions and the understanding the mantle dynamics below those plates. Again, being able to sense um, at all levels, or many levels within the Earth, how, how plate tectonics works. And yet, at the same time, on the serendipity side, to be able to understand that soil moisture is a signal source in for GPS. We had believed it to be uh, we had believed water to typically be a noise source, but for people who are interested in water and who are bold in looking at noisy data, uh, sometimes uh, new discoveries come forth. And we like to recognize Christine as the only PI who comes to UNAVCO asking us for our noisiest antennas. And then on the right, of course, this integration of GPS with strong ground motion accelerometer allowing the GPS through a Kalman filtering technique to really uh, understand the full displacement of the waveform of seismic shaking, in this case during the Kukapa El Mayor earthquake, and this contribution from uh, Yeh Yehuda Box Group at UCSD. And then, okay, I'm going to take you a little bit far afield um, on the left here to Bangladesh, where seasonal flooding related to the monsoon season loads the Meghna River Delta and has a very strong vertical GPS signal that's associated with that, uh, with that seasonal loading and is um, leading to better understanding of how the, the whole hydrologic system works in this part of the world. We don't have PBO concentrated on the coastal areas that uh, where this might be a signal of interest within North America. Um, 
but clearly the technology is driving this direction. The science discoveries are, are very rich, and there's great and growing interest in sea level rise and how it interacts with uh, subsiding coastlines. And of course, we, as UNAVCO, also work on the ice side of that problem in supporting networks in the polar regions. So I think there's great opportunity there. And then so for what we've put forward for the next five years is that as we do our routine maintenance for um, Plate Boundary Observatory, we will uh, continue to upgrade stations to these real-time capabilities, uh, an area of great, uh, great and growing interest to uh, many scientists, especially as we start to touch on the hazard science problems and the fundamental processes that drive a variety of hazards, not just earthquake hazards, but also uh, as hazards in the atmosphere and other realms. We have uh, also established some new networks or uh, collaborated with international partners on seeding new net networks in other parts of the world. Coconut is an important one. We seem to be missing. Oh, I, that was the movie. Huh. Okay, uh, and the blank place on the right uh, would be a movie of the Superstorm Sandy as it unfolds with GPS determined precipitable water um, uh, water vapor determinations that help understand the uh, the evolution of the intensity of the hurricane or the superstorm as it unfolds. So precipitable water vapor helps initialize those models and then um, um, provides for better predictive capabilities or forecasting capabilities for uh, hurricanes as they unfold. This grows out of a project in the Caribbean where UNAVCO is partnering with a uh, very large number of countries, because the Caribbean has something like 43, and I think 34 of them are actively participating in this network, where we take existing stations that may need modest upgrades or may be fine as brought forward with new installations to form a regional framework that is openly available to all and incorporated into common data products and um, openly available, and this really uh, provides kind of a new way of partnering internationally. So we're getting more than 100 stations will be part of this network with a US investment to pay for uh, fewer than half in the end. And then uh, also growing out of long time, long term conversations with Mexican collaborators. Mexico is now putting forward, uh, uh, putting forward funding with World Bank money for a network that spans Mexico. This is very important to U.S. interests because of the weather that we experience in much of the central U.S. actually uh, uh, unfolds in this region. And uh, this becomes then another opportunity to partner across international boundaries. And so this is what we envision in the, in the future going forward, but with less emphasis on international boundaries, uh, 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 a world in which geodetic observations throughout the Americas and the Caribbean could be brought together in a federation of networks that is uh, funded by a variety of sources, but is, sent, is coordinated through strong international collaborations and allows us to take on, rather than just US scale, uh, tectonic problems and uh, problems in other disciplines, but to, uh, to be able to investigate these, um, these these problems at a hemispheric scale, a scale of the Western Hemisphere and the Caribbean. This then becomes a framework for doing things like subduction zone observatory, which I think you'll hear more about from others. Um, of course, the geodetic networks are far larger than the subduction zones themselves. The UNAPCO board has envisioned the network of the federated network of networks is something that is larger but strongly over overlapping and supportive to things like the subduction zone observatory. And I guess I'd just like to challenge you as you think about what is the next big thing that that size might have a lot of dimensions, not just in time, but in space and in um, relying on collaborations that and investments that might be far greater than those that we can expect to make from a single U.S. agency. Thank you. <laughs>